Oh, we live. Connection available. Yeah. Oh, we got the DJ. Yes, I do want to share it to a group, Mr. Facebook Man. Thank you for the options. Yeah, and here we go. Yeah. Ooh. And here we go, like. As we wait for them to fall. But even if... Nah, I ain't gonna, let me chill. Uh. Locksmith. Knowledge is the key. We gon'... Nah, y'all don't want me to flow. It's a Sabbath day anyway. There you go. Hey, shout out to everybody. That's uh, here early. You know what I mean? I would say I was sorry for being late, but I said approximately. So, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm, I'm right on time. It is the seventh day of the week. Knowledge is the key. We're here again. Food and the people of God. As if you didn't know. You know, I like to let the beat ride out. I give everybody a chance to come through We start a little bit later yeah, It was necessary And here we go Let's get no. Yeah let's get it We gonna get it for sure Let's see what we talking about today Oh uh, man How do you exercise self control Hashtag temperance Right With food Cause this is food and the people of God. Seems like my music ain't as loud as it normally is. You have to see about that, Mr. DJ. Hold on, let me see. Yeah. Uh huh. Peace to everybody on Instagram, Facebook. A lot of people see it after the fact. I ain't even mad at you. I ain't gonna take up too much of your time. I wanna interrupt your regularly scheduled Sabbath day programming. But it's some issues we wanna kinda read through. Yeah, it's the beat ride out. And here we go. Uh. Food and the people of God. What's this, part four? Yeah, part four. How do you exercise self-control with food? Now, it's a real question. It's a real question. How do you exercise temperance with food? Woo. So, I got two questions. Uh -oh. Corona, Jerry oh, man. Take, take it easy. All right. Okay, it's hard to be DJ and um, director. So, anyway, the question is, I got two questions we want to start with. First question is the question of the season. I've been asking the question for four episodes. Now I'm going to ask it again. I'm going to ask it again right now. Happy Sabbath day. Does Jesus care how much food you eat per meal? Do he even care? Right? Second question. Matter of fact, go ahead and drop your answers in the comments. It's all good. Second question. If you really, really, really hungry, what are you willing to go without in order to eat? Things that make you go, hmm, Fridays. One more time. If you really, really, really hungry, what are you willing to go without in order to eat? Right? Brother, woo, I see you. What's good, family? Right now, I don't know if uh, I asked that second question. I'm thinking about the Snicker commercial. I don't know if y'all remember that from back in the day. Snicker commercial dude was at the bowling alley and like his stomach was grumbling. Rah, rah, rah. And then he was like, ignore it, trying to play bowling. And so he went to pick up the bowling ball and his stomach was like, nah, and smacked the bowling ball out of his hand. He hit the ground. I mean, the bowling ball hit his foot. And then the Snicker, when he said, ow, the, the hand that came out of his belly put Snicker in his mouth. Right. So hunger get what hunger wants. And that's why I asked that second question. If you're really, 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 really hungry, 
What are you willing to go without in order to eat? All right, now, to deal with this, like I said, I ain't going to take up all night. Let's run straight to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis. Oh, man, I threw my hat on the floor. Genesis chapter 25. Because we want to talk about some things. When you get really, 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 really hungry, right? Maybe in the food not right there. Like, what what, what do we do? What's, what, what's happening? What do we do with that? Right? Because, you know, sometimes when you be hungry for a long time, your mood change. Right? You go from hungry to hangry or something like that. Right? And so we always talk about temperance when we're talking about sexual promiscuity. Right? But temperance just means self-control. So, you know, we all know we probably are related to somebody that uh, don't have self-control when it comes to food. And that is, of course, the purpose of this. So make sure you share something. If you haven't already, make sure you share something. Share it to your favorite group. Because this is that thing that nobody like talk about, least of all Israel. Right? But I digress. Genesis chapter 25, maybe if I can get there. Genesis chapter 25, I want to start this talking about... One of the patriarchs and his interaction, you know what I'm saying? His name is uh, Jacob and Esau. That's what we own. Jacob and Esau talking about food and the people of God. Temperance. How do you, how are you temperate concerning food? All right. Shout out to everybody just falling in. I know how to go down. All right. Genesis 25. We're going to kick this off at verse 27. And it say, and the boys grew, and Esau was cunning, a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob, and Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Right now, a lot of people like to quote Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 17 to me. Go ahead, write that down if you don't already know what to say. Ecclesiastes 10 and 17. It says that you blessed is the uh, people uh, when, the, when the princes eat for strength, right? And the reason why I bring that up, because we, we just read Esau came from the field and he was faint. So that's what he need. He needs strength, Right? Like us. Now, I want to know. How many people ever went somewhere where you was so hungry, so physically hungry? that I mean, so hungry that you physically felt faint. Can anybody relate to this dude here? Right. Forget what he was doing. Just that you went so long without eating that you feel faint. That's the real question. Right. Verse um. See if you can see yourself in Esau. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same rare pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, his name called Edom. Not Edom, like Edom up, like Edom, like Edom, right? Closer to Adam than it is to Edom, right? But anyway, I am so hungry that blank. Fill in that blank. I'm so hungry that, so hungry that I can't pay attention while I'm in the church service on a Sabbath day or on Sunday. I don't care what day. I'm so hungry that I can't speak peacefully because it's been so long since I ate. Remember, I was just talking about hangry. Right. I know sometimes in American culture, we act like hangry is OK, like Jesus OK, the hangry spirit. Just because you're hungry. So hungry that I overreacted and cussed you out earlier. So hungry that I was late and I couldn't make it because X, Y, and Z. I forgot to do something important because I was so hungry I had to eat right quick. You know how that go. Like I said from earlier, if you really, 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 really hungry, what is it that you're willing to go without? To feed yourself. Right, because a lot of times in our lives, I don't know if y'all are willing to admit it, we go without stuff so that we can eat. 
Sometimes it's important. Sometimes it's important to other people. Verse 33. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him. And he sold his both birthright to Jacob. Right? So Jacob made him give him his word and Esau gave up the birthright due to hunger. One more time, if you just joining us on Instagram, this is Food and the People of God, episode four. And we're talking about how are you temperate concerning food? Right? We just read Genesis 25 and 23. Jacob made Esau give up the word due to hunger, but this is spiritual birthright. Right? That's why he gave it up so readily. It's a spiritual thing. And um, Esau, not a spiritual man, according to the scripture. Right? Verse 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drank and rose up and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Right? And I would, I would dare to say some people will sell their birthright for a double burger, no cheese. All right. But again, Hebrews, I think uh, Hebrews 13 or 12, I think like that. Uh, Peter called Esau fornicator and profane. Right. You would think that it's a unique scenario. I think we all know this because of who it is, because it's Esau, Jacob and Esau. Right. Remember, based on their fate and prophecy, that's why everybody know this story. Right. We don't think about as badly as who did the same thing. I know some people that did the same thing as Esau. And we all like, like I say, we like to hate on them because of what they going what's gonna happen to them in prophecy. But I know some people did the same thing. What's good? Let's go to Numbers chapter 11. It was a whole nation of people did the same thing Esau did. And nowadays, that nation of people, they can't seem to speak peaceably about Esau. Right, but I ain't going to get on their case. It's a Sabbath day. I'm just going to read something. Let's go to Numbers chapter 11 so we can see what we can see about who else despised their birthright. So hungry, they, they traded all in to get some food. Traded in just to get some food. Numbers chapter 11. Damn. I keep trying to flip my page. It won't flip. Keep coming back. Numbers chapter 11, even though they experienced God's nearness through bread that was rained down from heaven. Because we ain't going to read the whole story. We read some of it already. But the bread rained down from heaven. That's goodness of God. That's the blessing of God. It was crisp. Before the bread, God gave them water. It was bitter water. He knocked the tree into the tree, made it sweet water. Right? It's what they getting from God. It wasn't enough. They complained. Remember what Esau traded his birthright in for, right? Bread and lentils. Right? I made the joke about people trading their birthright for double burgers, but watch this though. Numbers 11 and verse 4. Because the people of Israel complained. Uh, verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. Mr. Booker, what's good, bro? And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. Right? So, I, you know, while I was doing this, I looked up some syn synonyms. Right? If you don't know what a synonym is, ask me in the chat and I'll tell you. But I looked up some synonyms for lusting. Check this out. I don't know if y'all ever did that before, but check this out. Check this out. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Catch this. Catch this. Catch this. Watch this. Lusting. Synonyms. Yearning. Longing. Desiring. And guess what else? Hungering. And thirsting. Hungering and thirsting are both synonyms for lusting. I know some people try to have a debate. Can a can a man lust for his own wife? And it, is it a sin if she lusts for her husband? Man, we talking about lusting for food, though. 
Man, you and your wife could break up. One of y'all could die, something like that. You still got to eat. I'm just saying. Um, I don't know about y'all. That was deep to me, right? Things that make you go, hmm, Sabbath days. Food for thought, y'all. Come get a plate. Verse 4. I mean, in the middle of verse 4. Uh, let's start at the beginning. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a hungering. And the children of Israel also wept again. Not for the first time. They wept again. And said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish we did eat in Egypt freely. And the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. I think this all food Dr. Sabi said was cool. I think he said we could eat cucumbers. Only certain kind of melons, though, and only green onions. But nevertheless, though, lots of fish eat freely. Right? I don't know if you ever considered that these ex-slaves is sitting here talking about the food that they was able to eat freely. Right? You know what freely means, right? Freely means without obstruction. Right? That's almost like some people here in America, right? How about you? How about you? How you eat? Are you able to just walk through the store and, you know, not everything in the store, but whatever it is that's on your heart, that's your desire, you're going to eat, you just grab it and eat it? Is that what time it is with you? You walk around your house or even around the city, right, on a Saturday night or a Sunday night or something, and like, yeah, I think I want X, Y, and Z place. That's free without obstruction. Right, you could be talking about that you didn't pay for, or it could just mean that you you free to do it. Right, because I would argue that all of us got enough money to do that, to buy whatever we want on whatever restaurant menu that we might want to go to. We don't do it because we spend our money on shoes, or you know, what I'm saying we spend our money on lunch, or we spend our money on you know the kids to go to the ice esca capades or something like that, but. Technically, if you felt like it, you reach in your pocket and pay for it, right? Freely, right? Um, especially a place like Chipotle, McDonald's, if you consider that food, right? Verse six, but our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Right, blew my mind too, sis. The Israelites spoke of their past captivity in verse six. I mean, all these uh, verse four through six, they talking about their past captivity like it's a good thing, like it's fond, and they speaking about their present freedom with God in disdain. His provisions, like it ain't good enough, and that's again why I asked you. When you get really, really, really hungry, what you willing to go without? Have you ever considered that ain't nothing to eat all day because the Lord made it that way today for you? Like maybe today you're supposed to be fasting or something. I don't know. Maybe, you know, something happened. You know, today is the day they're going to be something in the greens or something like that. It's going to be bacteria they're going to find. And like, that's the reason why you done went all day without eating. Yeah, your head hurt. But like, that's the flesh. So, you know what I mean? That don't really matter. Right? Something to think about. Because these people talking about that slavery is better than freedom, right? And on top of the fact that God's supposed to supply all your needs, right? But now we want to go back to where they used to hit us with the whip. We was making bricks without straw. Willing to trade in freedom for food. That's what we're talking about. These people, worse than Esau, is willing to trade freedom for food. Brother Hill, what's really good, man? We just over here talking about these rockhead Israelites, man, trying to trade in their freedom for food. For not even burgers without cheese. They trying to trade in their freedom for fish and leeks and garlics and onions. Right? Um... And like I said, we often do the same thing. Slavery to sin. 
I know sometimes if anybody here ever sinned before, you know, sometimes sin can seem like it's worth it if we can do what we want to do. Right? A lot of us, we followed the Lord because he wouldn't let us do what we wanted to do. Right? Same kind of thing with these people that we're reading about. Right? They would have did whatever they wanted to do, but the Lord like, nah, you're going to march around this desert and do what I said. Right? Now, new dream. You might be asking, what's so wrong with gluttony? Is it really sinful to eat too much? Right? You need a sweet fix to feel out of control with food. Is it wrong for that? The children of Israel probably wanted the same thing. What's so wrong with the fish in Egypt and the cucumbers and the leeks and the garlics? Hmm. They cravings, though. They cravings. Remember? That's what happened when you want something, you crave it, right? Fell a lusting, right? They cravings. Woo, one more time. They greedy cravings got the wrath of God. So, not necessarily saying that eating too much or wanting certain food is sin, but your cravings mess around and get you cut off. Right? Trade in your birthright. It ain't a sin to trade in your birthright for a morsel of lentils either. You see what I'm saying? You feel me though? Oh, garlic is not on Dr. CB's guide. Turn down. Oh, well. What up? Shout out to the glow. All right. So, uh, where we at? Uh, Numbers 11 and verse 18. One more time. You just joining us. Food and the people of God. How do you exercise temperance with food? Right? The Bible makes it sound like self-control is important. We on Numbers 11 and verse 18 because we just found out the children of Israel is worse than Esau. He's willing to trade his birthright for some food, for some lentils. Children of Israel willing to trade freedom for some food. Verse 18. And say unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and you shall eat flesh. And you have four, you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it is well with us in Egypt. It was well with us in Egypt. Slavery was well with us. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh and you shall eat. Right? Because the Lord will give you what you want. Shout out to Brother Will. I think one of them, uh, one of his lessons he said that he, he read, excuse me, that you know the Lord will serve you according to your idols. Like if that's it will answer you according to your idols. If that's what you own, you own that idolatry, you want to deal with the idols, boy, he'll make that psyche be on point for you. Right. Uh verse 19. You shall not eat it one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but a whole month until it come out your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you. Because that ye have despised the Lord, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? Boy, that sounds worse than Esau. Whew. Skip down to verse 33. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled. Against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatatadabah. Right, say that one more time Kibroth Hatatadabah. Because there they buried the people that did what? That lusted. Right? Now, in Hebrew, this word lust, same word translated as craving. All right, feel free to go Google that. All right, maybe, maybe though, maybe it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. All right, gluttony is the sister to drunkenness. All right, they are always mentioned, well, not always, mostly mentioned together. All right, both of them are like, 
neutral as far as the world is concerned. Right? But just like being drunk leads you away from Christ, I'm here to argue through food and the people of God that doing that food thing the wrong way also leads you away from Christ. Right? Too much food leads to gluttony. All right, obviously, persuade us against Jesus Christ. Now, I want to go to Luke chapter 4 because we just read about how Esau traded in his birthright for food. We saw how Jacob's children, descendants, the children of Israel, got delivered out of Egypt and was willing to trade their freedom in for food. And we've come to grips with the fact that most of us would also be willing to trade very important things for food. All right. And I want to go to Luke chapter four, check out the master and see how we ought to behave. All right. Or at least get a glimpse into it. All right. Because a lot of times people say, you know, eat when you're hungry. All right. I can feel that. But I don't think anything is quite that easy. Right, Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, really quickly. All right, Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, it say, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hunger. All right? Say a lot of people trade their life for food. You ain't never lied. You ain't never lied. Yeah, because you try to tell them something about it, they don't want to hear it. Or they sidestep you and say, yeah, you know, they call Jesus a glutton. As if, like, that's true or something. But, yeah, I hear you. I feel you. Um, Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, 40 days tempted of the devil, and those days he ate nothing. And when they was over with, when they was ended, he afterward hungered. Right? Notice the similarities here in this story. Right? First, the similar, not the similarities and the differences. So, first, the similar. Before this event in chapter 3, Jesus just got baptized, similar to Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they went through the Red Sea. First Corinthians tell you that that's their baptism, right? Then after they came out the Red Sea, where they go? Into the wilderness, right? And the same thing Jesus just did, got baptized, boom, to the wilderness, right? So that's why I say he going to show us something about this food thing. Because remember, that was their whole thing. That's why this thing exists that I'm doing on here. Because their whole thing, Israel, was about the food. They were so hungry, though. They just had some cravings, though. Right, because remember the Bible say it's all good if you receive with Thanksgiving, but like they had cravings though. Right, and we remember what we read happened in the wilderness. Right, now let's see why God allowed them to get hungry. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out the mouth of God. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Right. Jesus was hungry and got tempted with food and decided no. Yeah, it's a bigger picture here. It's a bigger point here. We're going to read about the bigger point. But the idea that, yeah, I'm hungry, so I got to eat. <clears throat> Remember, I was talking about we trade in for food, right? We be late to this, late to that. You know what I mean? Can't make it to this. Oh, man, I'm sorry I couldn't because I had to do that because I had to eat. Right? I ain't telling you not to eat. I'm just reading about it, right? So last scripture, and then I'm going to get on up out of here. Deuteronomy chapter 8, because I want to read about the context of the statement that Jesus made about man shall not live by bread alone, right? And maybe you can see how like laser focused 
the scripture is and how tightly woven it is together. Right? Remember I said the people left Egypt, they got baptized in the Red Sea, went to the wilderness, right? And if you remember the story, three days in the wilderness, they got hungry and started crying. Jesus got baptized into the wilderness. He did the 40 day thing. Then he got hungry and then got tempted. And instead of crying, get behind me, Satan. Right? And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out the mouth of God. So he quoting that from Moses and them. So maybe it has something to do with all of this food stuff we're talking about. All right, chapter 8, Deuteronomy 8. I know this is not a popular subject, even though all of us are affected by it. Some of us got to wait till we're 50 to find out we're affected by it. I know you believe the FDA. I get it. I get it. All right, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 1. Feel free to share this with somebody who needs to hear this. Share it in your favorite group. Share it in your healthy Hebrews group. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 1. Here you go. All the commandments which I commanded thee this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear to your fathers. Right? So we still talking about the same people. And the Lord said, Remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years. Excuse me. In the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or not. Right? So this is one more time. He wants you to remember the way that he took you through the wilderness because he took you to the wilderness because he was trying to humble you and prove you whether your heart was right. Because that's what Jesus did, right? He went to the wilderness and he was humbled. By Satan, and he was proved. And he proved that his heart was right. Right? Verse 3. And he humbled thee. Again, back to the humble. And he humbled thee. Why did the Lord humble you in the wilderness? He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Why would he let you go hungry? And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know. But why though? That he might make thee know that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceed out the mouth of the Lord do man live. So I don't know if y'all caught that, but quite literally, the Lord allows you like he allowed the children of Israel in the wilderness, like he allowed Jesus Christ to be hungry so that you will know that you don't live off the food. You live off the provisions of God. All right? Not just, not just, not just the Bible, because remember, it, everything that comes from God Right. That's what Jesus was quoting. He's saying, look, Satan, you're doing the same thing to me that you did to them in the wilderness. And it ain't going to work because man don't live off of just this food. Matter of fact, forget that food. I'm not trading in my freedom for some food. I'm not going to trade in my birthright for some food. I'm not going to trade in people who depending on me for some food. I'm not going to trade in my attention for some food. I'm not going to trade in what I'm learning in class for some food. In conclusion, as I wrap it up, cravings. Ain't nothing wrong with cravings. I suspect that God gave us cravings to show us how much we need him. All right? That's why he gave us craving, because that's what we just read. He allowed them to be hungry in the wilderness so that they could see that everything come from him. I think that's why you get hungry. And that's why I made the statement that, nah, you don't just go eat just because you're hungry. 
Of course not. People sell their birthright and sell their freedom and sell their life because they hungry. Right? So, think that's all I got. Cravings and lust, how to overcome them. Maybe that's what we'll talk about next week. Cravings and lust, how to overcome them both. That's a good idea. I'm going to think on that. Right? In the meantime, in between time, hey, happy Sabbath day. Um, I am the locksmith because knowledge is the key. This is food. And the people of God, you just bear witness to episode four, how you be temperate concerning food. Well, the answer is that you ignore your flesh when it get hungry. Do what you got to do. And then when it's time to eat, we'll deal with the cravings next week. Right? So next Friday evening, 745-ish, I'm going to be live right back here. Locksmith knowledge is the key. Study the Bible, not the sermon is the label that pays me. Turn. <laughs>